Welcome back to the Working Class Musician YouTube channel. I am Jimmy Franklin. This channel is dedicated to making sure you always get the most bang for your buck when you're buying new gear, so to be sure you never overspend. Wait, I said it wrong. So to be sure that you get to me before you overspend. Hit subscribe below, turn on the bell notifications, you'll never miss a video. Always remember that all the gear in my videos is available at a link below from our friends at Sweetwater. If you wanna pick it up, be sure to use the links that are in my description boxes. It's no extra charge for you, and it helps support the channel, which really helps. So thank you in advance. Today I have something that I am fairly excited about. I have been a modeler guy since I can remember at this point. I had, I had the old, <laughs> I mean, not that this is much better. This doesn't really help the case, but I had the Digitech thing. You know, that had the yaya -ya on it that we all used to sound like Slipknot. I also was an early adopter of like things like the Line 6 Pod. And ever since things like the, the pod floor units with the expression pedal attached to them, everything has kind of copied that style and look since. It's been, for the most part, the same thing. And what I have here today is no different. This is the Headrush MX-5, which has a sick name. I will admit, I'm going to be a tough critic of this because I bought a Helix pretty much as soon as I could. And I've had the same Helix floor unit since either 2017 to 2018, whatever year was the year after or two that it came out. And so just remember, it's me, Jimmy, I'm your friend. I'm your friend when it comes to these modeling units. But I'm going to be rough on this one because I do love my Helix. That being said, we do way too often compare all these modelers to one another. It's like, oh, how does the pod bean compare to the quad cortex? They don't. No, no floor unit, no processor, nothing compares to anything anymore. They're all their own beast. And that's what I kind of want to see today. I want to see, just get my first impressions of tones and where it sits on the scale of pod bean to quad cortex. So let's check it out right now. I've got the unit powered up and let's see what happens. So this right here is the beautiful Headrush MX-5. Let me see, can I do a screen and screen thing here right now? Let's do, let's do this one. <gasps> oh, there I am. I've done it. Look at me. I'm like a freaking genie. Okay, so as you see here, the floor unit is basically reminiscent of every single floor unit that exists now. It's standard to have a little expression pedal with some grip tape on it, and then you have, uh, you know, a nice kind of little uh, three pedal situation that can be used as stomp boxes, or you could switch between patches, which is really cool. You can do things like set up set lists, which is awesome, which puts your um, patches in a certain order so you can click through them easy, which is very nice. It's a very nice feature. And on top of that all, check this out. It's a touch screen. Now I'm going to go to some dirty tones though. Oh, heavy tones, even better. Let's go to heavy tones. Like a fox, what is this? And I do have the trusty Ibanez AZ today because how else would you test a modeler without, you know, unless it's with an AZ. <laughs> Also, if at any point you guys know what these effect names uh, mean, like this one says like a fox, if at any point you guys know what they mean, please leave them below so I know because I, I can't think of what like a fox is off the top of my head. <laughs> Springy. Very cool. I'm not entirely sure it's giving me the amp in the room feel, but inspiring. Gonna turn it up a little. Oh yeah, now that it's turned up in the room, I feel it a little bit more. Okay, let's flip through a few more and just see what heavy tones are here, okay? Let's see, let's see. No, I don't want to do that. 
I want to go through. Oh, the touch screen is sweet. I do think it's worth saying that I probably would not ever want a touch screen on stage, but I find it super useful in like studio settings. For example, check this out. Ooh, screen and screen again. There we go. So check this out. Something that you can do on here is if you're looking for a specific patch, you could search it, which is totally sweet. But truly, it in a live scenario, I don't think I would take the time to be like, oh my God, my patch is here somewhere. And they're kind of small. It's like texting, you know? It's like, imagine like trying to text with one finger on like, but the phone is by your feet on stage with the guitar strapped to you. I don't know if I would use that in a live scenario, but it's a cool feature. Also keep in mind, just like other modelers, you can use this as a studio tool to control your DAW and some of your, you know, some of your patches on like, um, on like your plugins and stuff like that, which is really cool. You know, if you have Helix Native or, um, or uh, you know, any of the neural DSP stuff that you need an expression pedal or you wanna switch between patches, or if you wanted to use it as an effects pedal, just effects, no amps in front of some of your plugins, it's very, very useful for that. I think that so far it's a pretty useful scenario. The, the effects are great. <laughs> What is this one ballad it's called? Check it out. Look, this is called one ballad. So I don't know what the point of this is, but it sounds like Ramstein. Perfect. Oh yeah. I think it sounds pretty legit so far. I could imagine that if you added your own IRs, it would probably make this unit shine just a little bit more. Or if you had it running into a cab, you know, for cable kind of thing where you're using it as your effects into an amp, it probably could do a good job. I was actually reading in the manual and I saw a YouTube video as well about how you add your own effects and impulse responses and patches to this by downloading them. And it's super simple. It's the simplest I've ever seen. And I think that simplicity is something that this whole market is missing a little bit because I'll make a video on it if you guys want, let me know. But what it what essentially you do is you just plug it in via USB and the computer will read it as an external hard drive and you just click and drag the information into this. That is the kind of simplicity that us lowly guitar players need. We need that kind of functionality. It's so simple. Does that score it points on the tone scale? No, but let's keep looking at some tones. This one's called Keep Believing. Please do a decent job at it. Oh, it probably has the crazy, the crazy delay on it. Let me see. Let me see if I do a stomp. Stomp, hands free. Okay. Dyna delay, I guess that's the delay that we're doing for the... <laughs> it sounds pretty cool. So there's a little bit too much fizz. That's one of the things about the modelers that I don't always love. There's a little bit too much fizz and something that I had, it's a Mark 8. Jesus, that's good. Oh my God. So yeah, a little too much fizz for my liking, but normally a good IR will cure that whole thing right up. I'm gonna still tell you, I'm still a big fan of the Line 6 Helix, so I'm gonna leave that link below. This does not replace the Helix in my heart yet. Take me home clean. Oh, I like phasey cleans. A little 
little bit more chimey. See, there's that hiss again. There's that little bit of fizz at the end that I'm not in love with. See, as soon as I go to a humbucker, it doesn't, it's not the best clean in the world. My biggest complaint when I had my, uh, my first pod ever was the cleans. I loved all the distortion effects. Ooh, nice. Good delay though. Rich. I dig it. If it's not coming through on the recording as well, that's my bad for being a terrible producer. Um, but in the room here, it feels nice. Yeah, you can't do this without people thinking John Mayer, right? <laughs> clean. I wonder what this is. Hipster jazz. with a heavy rock lead hopefully this gives you enough information of how this sounds so far and my first impressions i think on a scale of pod bean up to quad cortex this is sitting right below and for the price point especially i think this is sitting below a pod go for me right now but it could be above it i'm just not sure i haven't actually had enough time with the pod go to really understand but let's let's <laughs> impressions are pretty good I'm enjoying it so far but stay tuned for more videos where I maybe compare this maybe throw it through an effects loop or something like that throw it in front of some plugins I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it let me know what you guys want to see me do with this that's all for now and just stay tuned I will see you next time <laughs>